And that's why buying a new camera is not gonna improve your image as much as buying new lights. Okay, we got another addition to our equipment stash today. And there it is. Okay, Jamie, you wanna share with us some lighting terminology? So for starting filmmakers, that looks really bad, I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> for starting filmmakers, what are kind of the three basic lighting terms? So, <clears throat> The three basic lights that we use on any film set is a key light, a backlight, and a fill light. Um, the key light is the main light that lights the most of the subject that's in the film. And the fill light fills in the shadow. So if we have a key light on my face here and it's really bright, this side might be really dark so we fill it softly and that would be a fill. And then a backlight, self-explanatory, is the, the light that comes in the back and creates sometimes the halo that you see in people. Cool. And depending on your shooting style, you can, sometimes your key light, sometimes your backlight is your key light, you know, and sometimes it's your fill lights. Who's the director of photography for, um, um, you were pulling Robert up the video? Robert Richardson, I believe. He lights his subject with a backlight that's very heavy and it actually it overexposes the hairline by like six to eight stops <laughs> and then like then the bounce from that heavy light uh, fills in the face hmm. if that makes sense so in that case he's using his backlight as his key and robert his fill richardson, yeah so it's robert richardson who's done just it's a always ton a of backlight. stuff the so here you've got a big backlight, and then he's obviously got some other lights here filling in the face, but a lot of times he'll do that fill with just one giant light. And what's also cool about him that I learned from this video is that he doesn't always care where the light's coming from. So it's like here, you look at this and it's like, well, I mean, there's a light up there, but it doesn't really make sense in real life. Like here's a good example of that. Maybe there's like a, a window or something, but really like... Yeah, we'll also back it up a little bit. Because mm -hmm. look, so here, lights keen them from, so or the backlight is the opposite of the camera, right? This one or? No, no, the one with Hugo. Is good enough to fill faces for exposure. So like, where's the light there? Right, behind them. Behind them, and right. then you flip the next shot. Behind them. And behind them. <laughs> so, so. And, then, and then they've got the, they've got all this brought up fairly nicely, but he's not afraid to make it go dark over here too, yeah. which is kind of cool. We've talked a little bit about before the kind of misconception that we get into as filmmakers of always looking for, you know, the best camera. What's the best camera that's going to help me get these better images? We've realized that there's really two ways that you can invest your money to improve the quality of your video. The first is, and honestly, probably the cheapest is audio. The second thing that we found is lighting. Um, investing in lighting can be pretty expensive comparable to cameras, um, but if doing it right, doing the proper lighting, we can take our old Sony a7s that we filmed with and we can make them look better just by better lighting. Okay, so we're doing some more lighting tests today. The other day we tried a static shot where there's no movement, kind of lighting it almost more like a portrait photo. Um, looked great, worked really well. We were able to get some great contrast behind the subject to be able to make them pop. Now, kind of what we're experimenting with today as we've watched a bunch of movies trying to dissect how they do moving shots. So we kind of realized that, or we think the theory is don't light the subject, light the room and get the room to look good since we're on a wider shot. And then let the subject basically start in good light and then end in good light. So that's what we're gonna kind of experiment with and see if we can get it to work. Again, it's moving in and out of light. Yeah. So like, it's okay for you to move out of the perfect lighting, you know, unless we want to keep it perfect, but then we'll have to do a moving light. No, we don't. I'm okay happen. with it going dark. We'd probably just want something down the hallway, kind of kicking off of right. like the side or something like that. So, so the thing is at that moment, 
you're in darkness anyway. And this is why the story, like, you can't just test with nothing. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like, it matters. What's happening in your head matters for the lighting. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's the way I'm thinking, down the way you're scared to make this phone call, you get to this part and hesitate. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need any beauty lighting. Yeah. And the fact that you're in the dark and even in an uncomfortable uh you know, we're on the we're on the light side, maybe a little bit ugly. Yeah, it makes sense. And then you then maybe you kind of you man up and then you walk into the what we're gonna create nicer lighting uh, by the phone. Mm -hmm. This one, I, I almost think we keep it in silhouette. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's cool. I I think I like because it's super warm over there. Mm -hmm. So it's it gives a really good contrast to what's going on in here. Yeah. So do we have enough light off of this key to where we don't need the big guy? Right now, I think we do. Because then what we could do is we could actually stick the big guy over here uh -huh. um, and then just silhouette me completely. So what we ended up doing was we added just a little bit of a kicker to hit the back side of my head. And then we diffused it just a bit and basically that's acting like the light coming from here. Just so it created a bit of a rim and separation so my character was separated from the dark background. Um, and on the screen, we just opened up Photoshop and did like a, a gray so that that kind of dimmed the screen so we could have a little more accurate control over how dim or bright the screen was. We have the light here, giving a fill just kind of to the overall ambience of the kitchen, which then basically puts my character in silhouette. We have this kicker, which are just some puck lights um, that we got off Amazon and we gelled them blue um, just to kind of pop out a little bit of this kitchen stuff so it wasn't completely in shadow. Then we put a reflector on the ground and are hitting it with that light and that's just to lift my pants a little bit out of just absolute data loss. Um, and that's pretty much it. So basically we move from hopefully a little bit more of a bluish environment here to a yellow environment here um, that's a darker environment. Part of what we're doing today is trying to see how haze affects the ambience and how it helps the mood or how it hurts the mood. So we're going to now, since we shot it once without the haze, we're going to haze the place and then see what it does to the light. So now we're going to do a few test shots. As Drew has mentioned, this is just a test, so we don't really have a scene that it, we are particularly trying to get across. And sometimes it makes it hard to figure out what the motivation of the light is. We're just making it look interesting. We try to make up a story as we go that this person gets an email and then because of the email they go to do a phone call and the phone call now is kind of like uh, they've not wanted to call this person and so they're kind of in the, the silhouette, they're in a dark moment as they go to do this. Again, keep in mind it's not perfect. In this case, Drew's doing the camera operation, the focus, and the dolly all at once. We'd have Jamie, our first AC, on the focus. We'd have a second AC who's pulling the dolly and then Drew would be able to focus only on camera movements. And even the lighting's not perfect. Again, we're, we're testing different ideas and different concepts, kind of looking at it, you know, maybe the backlight's a little bit too much. We uh, maybe want to flag that out. Maybe we want to get a little bit more light in the eyes. There's a whole bunch of variables, but the idea is let's record it. We'll look at it, decide what we want to change. And then next time we do another setup, we focus on that different point and address it. So it's all about learning. Cut. Move was good. Everything was a little slower. Oh, in terms of my movement. wise yeah. but I don't think that's gonna... I think you can... Let's watch it back, because... Can we go one, two, three, and just see if we can see the changes in the... Yeah, we can try. Oh, yeah, it softens the colors. Yeah. yeah. I like that a lot. See, for me, I lost my contrast, though. You do. So it's like, when do you do the haze? While you're lighting? But, man, yeah, maybe. But I don't feel like we'd lost it in a bad way. I mean, I'd like that. Mm -hmm. So it pulls it up just a little bit. If you put a vignette or something on there yeah. in color. Yeah, I think it just softens the image just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And it, to me, adds a little bit more depth. It makes this room feel yeah. a lot a lot more layered. Yeah. You don't really know what you're looking at, you know? The only thing I maybe would have changed about this lighting is maybe we should actually hit a light right here on the back. 
against that because I like how we have this little bit thing here. Yeah. If we hit that just a little bit more, I think we need to get more small lights. Yeah. Yeah. We have a short film coming up that we're filming that has these huge windows. We're gonna have tons of daylight coming through. And the biggest thing we noticed was we were always blowing out the windows. So we're trying to figure out, okay, how can we counteract that brightness? So kind of what we're trying to right now is seeing if we can counteract it with a really bright light inside so that everything's kind of more of an even. After our last lighting session, Drew and I both felt like shooting um, on set with a black and white LUT would help us to be able to understand, re really just kind of light it so that it looks good with light and not worry about the colors, if that makes sense. So kind of the idea was Conrad Hall, when he was shooting a lot of his movies, he shot it in a way of, you know, just shooting like he was shooting on black and white film. So kind of trying to take that idea and say, okay, would that apply here to where we can light it with the black and white filter? Uh, and obviously we're shooting in color, but it just helps us light it better. So we're experimenting. Um, real quick, with the light setup, do you want to shoot it with this camera? Um, just kind of show difference between a, you know, kind of show that with a good lighting setup, you can make a sub thousand dollar camera look like a eight thousand plus dollar camera. Um, the only difference is you get a little bit more control of the image on the FS7, but again, with good lighting setup, you can get it to look great in both cameras. And that's why buying a new camera is not going to improve your image as much as buying new lights. So yeah, it's the title of the video, probably. Uh, one thing that we've learned is always shoot on the shadow side. I mean, obviously rules are there to be broken, but things always look more appealing when the camera is on the shadow side, away from the light. It just gives it more depth. I think between Drew and I and Jamie, we all have different cinematographers that we like and kind of the fun part is we can between their inspiration and our different interests we find something that just fits our style and the story and the story of all the story this one feels like the uh what's it called in uh, mutant ninja turtles no, he, well, yeah, nunchucks too, but like uh, they in that movie they have like the ooze, the green stuff, and the in like the vial. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you get jealous, <laughs> green. Yeah, they get.